Hey y'all, new day, new verse. We continue on in Isaiah. Today we're picking up with chapter 56 of the rest of two. To be. Father God, thank you so much for your words, for your wisdom. Thank you that you are the source of wisdom and understanding that when we seek you, seek your face, we know that you will take care of it all, Lord God. That you give wisdom without reproach. You just simply need to stop worrying our prayers and trust that you are good. Trust that you are a good, good Father. And that when we ask for bread, we will see it in abundance in the way you know we need. Lord, teach us to live not by our daily bread alone in the world's ways, but your daily bread. The Deuteronomy bread is every word from your mouth. I feel us greatly as you lead us, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, welcome and dwell. Amen. Verse to be. Blessed are those who honor my Sabbath days of rest and keep themselves from doing wrong. Yeah. I wanted to pause here because I think about the story of Jesus and I think about Sabbath in general, right? Because during Jesus' day, you know, he's the, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath is made for men, not men for the Sabbath. You know, and so when I look at verses like these, it invites me to ponder on it. You know, because it's like, okay, well, here we have God saying, you know, blessed are those who honor my Sabbath days of rest and keep themselves from doing wrong. And then you see Jesus, well, he's actively working. He's doing these things on Sabbath, which is causing the Pharisees and Sadducees to lose their mind. Because well, you're not even supposed to walk more than X amount of distance on Sabbath or Shabbat. So you know, it's kind of like, all right, and that's actually why the distance is referenced. And I don't remember which gospel, I'm pretty sure it's John. But the why that distance is there is because, again, only allowed to walk a certain distance. You know, and I'm a layman on this stuff. I just dig in, same as you guys, and just curious about it. You know, looking up different places of history, looking at what is consistent through line, digging in. Because he gave us the gift of reason. It's our opportunity to use it. I mean, Proverbs says that it is to his glory, or to his pleasure to hide them, our glory to find them, right? To actually dig in, to use not only our muchness to help cultivate the garden, but actually to spend time and have in here and in here refined. Because when this is thinking differently, everything else does. You know, what your eyes see, what your ears hear, what you take in. It's, it has that influence. You know, and this is speaking from personal experience. But digging into the verses here uh, about the keeping themselves from doing wrong. I uh, look at those in tandem, right? Because with the rest of Isaiah, go and dig through, I invite you always. They talk, uh, God talks about, sorry, distracted by George. Hi, you. The text gone through it talks about the fact that the kind of fast that he want are days that you know and sabbaths that he want are ones that actually do give opportunities for rest i mean i think it's as hosea maybe malachi one of them that's actually talking it's on the scroll of the 12 for sure that's talking about you know you guys call this days of rest but you wait for the sabbath end just so you can go back to gouging prices and go back to screwing each other and so I look at these verses, I'm like, okay, so keep themselves from doing wrong. Well, we know what is right, right? To live justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. It's really helpful when it's right there in plain text, right? It's probably why I remember it so clear. But I look at that, and I'm just like, okay, so then wrong is probably avoiding justice, hating mercy, and walking in arrogance. Well, what does that end up looking like, right? Digging in more. What are those different stories in here of the person walking in their own arrogance? You know, where Saul is walking tall, where David is spying Bathsheba, where I have made stupid decisions myself. Because when I look at these stories, it's not a place to go, uh-huh, uh-huh, I'm better than you. It's, wow, I remember that kind of stupid decision. Thank you for bailing me out of that one, because his outcome sucked. Mine was a little less painful comparatively. And it becomes a place of gratitude, an opportunity to actually look and be refined, to get the twig and logging company out of our own eye by the only one who can actually shape the wooden form we are. That's why I really love the wordplay about Tzela, but we'll get into that later when we're released to do it. You know, so if we understand that right is, you know, Micah 6 8, wrong is probably the inverse of it, right? Just following basic principles, right? What is the inverse of right? wrong what is the inverse of right left you know depending on the way you're talking about it but just look for the opposite so a sabbath day is a place where you're actively walking with god humbly resting with him going after mercy and justice and then i look at okay what else does sabbath mean because in genesis we see the first time that sabbath ever happens and it's like god rested everything that was done was completed here's rest and it makes me think it's like okay well 
from that ancient time period where basically every day of the week, every moment, you were go, 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 go. It's the point where we're now like, no, 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 you get the weekend off. Right? That progression happened over time. Shabbat, Sabbath, Saturday, <laughs> how the word has become apparently used, it has that initial day of rest is from right here, from God himself, going, no, 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 no. You got six days to do everything in. This day, I want it set apart for rest. This day, I want it set apart for a moment to recoup, to not feel like a pack animal, to not feel like a beast of burden. And going through Exodus, the fact that it's like, no, 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 the foreigner must observe the Sabbath. The slave among you must observe the Sabbath. Your animals must observe the Sabbath, which is part of why the Pharisees and Sadducees were losing it. Jesus when It's like, well, you're doing all this. Well, yeah, of course I am. You guys would rescue a sheep, the daughter of over Israel, uh, the daughter of Israel right here, the son of Israel right here, and they need a hand. So guess what? Get, oh, they're going to get it because they're more important than the little sheep. And it's interesting to me that you see, okay, so doing good on Sabbath is exactly what Jesus points out, the helping, the lifting up, the doing right. The other aspect of Sabbath is recognizing that everyone deserves some rest. Why were the slaves meant to do it? Why were the beasts of burden meant to do it? Because we are not designed to be worked into the grindstone and turned into dust by our fellow man. We are made from dust, and for dust we will return. This is a truism and a biblical fact. It's also really fun on a scientific point of view. Why would we accelerate the process by grinding each other into dust? With our words, with our actions, with our cruelty, with our disinterest in actually loving each other. Like, oh, yep, I will say it, absolutely, but actually doing it? Why bother? Actually looking at the person and seeing their story? Oh, that takes too much time. That takes effort. I have things to do. I have places to be. My life is so much more important than theirs. And suddenly the us and them is divided in how many ways? Time, place, money, purpose, importance, title, prestige, and ownership of things. And that's just in one single thought of, eh, can't be bothered. Because the seeds, they're a vicious thing. And this is speaking for my own experience, right? This, this isn't me trying to wag a finger and say, oh, this is how it should be done. This is like, you know, this is what I've noticed in my own life. You know, when I can casually look at that person, I see these seeds start to form and I have to stop and go, no, 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 no. No, th this person matters. If I have any value whatsoever, so do they. Because we are one species, homo sapien. The, the subcontracts that we use to divide each other so that it can be nice and compartmentalized don't exist. Don't believe me? Go read Colossians. Go read Galatians. We've gone through it before. Dig into the playlist. Go find any resources. Just pick up the word. Those divisions aren't there anymore. Those cut each other apart tools that we use to say us and them, not there anymore. There's no us and them. We only have one enemy in here, and it ain't flesh and blood. Why would Cain and Abel's silly cycle of savagery meant to be perpetuated, a fun George, when we're designed for so much more? Out, we're designed, we were the, built into the garden for a reason, meant to go into it. It's the behavior outside of it that causes all the problems. Because we get so interested in doing the wrong thing that we completely miss what a day of rest is all about. To remember that everyone is a person and get entitled to a bad day or a good day, a rest day, able to just be. And the fact that we have to tell each other you have permission to do that is wrong. You are a human being. Your experiences don't need permission. They simply are. The actions, that's a matter of choice. What we go through should help to refine us so that we make different ones. I've been abused, so I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to perpetuate the cycle this far, no farther. I have been hurt this far, no farther. I have been used this far, no farther. I have been wounded 
crippled, abused, betrayed, backstabbed, and nearly destroyed. This far, no farther. It ends with us. The cycle will not be perpetuated past us. We will not make the choice that continues the cycle of evil, and that is the choice we choose to make when we follow him. When we say, okay, I'm done trying to figure out how to play this cycle, cycle game, Ouroboros mentality that divides and destroys. Teach me how to be human, Lord, so that I might actually know what it is to be humane. We don't need him because we're good people. We need him because we're broken. And only he can make us right. We need him because we have experienced all these things. And the cycle perpetuates for a reason. If it is to stop with us, we need help. And the help is given freely. Like the wisdom, like the strength, like everything. Ask and you shall receive. Don't expect it to be something that you don't have to at least dig in and work for. God will feed the 5,000 true absolutely, but he's doing that every day by letting the farmers get involved. By letting the people whose muchness is microbiology play too. The very people who love digging into soil, rain patterns, water cycles, erosion, crop cycles, the, the macro, the micro, and everything in between. And that's just the beauty of making crops. Water into wine, that's easy. Getting people to play along, that takes work. And it's work he'll do in us if we just stop holding on to life with a gripped fist and let him show us how to live. Taking a day of Shabbat here to rest and to realize that that atlas stone was never yours to carry. I know I had to learn how to drop my own. That weight you have to roll up that crushes you every time. You don't have to keep rolling it up. That eagle devouring your liver, not anymore. You're not Prometheus, you're not Atlas. You are not made to suffer. You are made to live. If you accept his life, you will in ways you have never imagined. I promise you this. Because I've not only seen it more times than I can count. I've gone through it myself. Let him lead the way. Let him show you what it means to truly rest. Do you know well know what it is to do good? Let him lead. Follow your shepherd. The invitation's always been there. It won't always be. So take it now. May his favor be upon you. Know that you're loved. I'll see you next.